So this is what the movie Hacksaw Ridge was about, right? Killing people with a syringe, or did I get this loadout wrong? Okay, I haven't seen Hacksaw Ridge yet. And uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with the show Loadout, it's the series where I pick a gun and customization based on what you guys want to see. Uh, all you have to do is leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with. And I will pick one of the top comments for the next episode. And obviously today's top comment is about Hacksaw Ridge the movie. It's from Lasagna Jr. called the Hacksaw Ridge Challenge. You cannot under any circumstances kill a player. All right, well, I might have just broken that rule a little bit. You may only heal and revive other teammates similar to the movie Hacksaw Ridge. You will continue this until you reach 75 revives. The reason behind that is the real life Desmond Doss saved 75 wounded soldiers, mainly in the Battle of Okinawa in World War II. He never fired a bullet and never killed a soul. Even though this happened in another world war, the concept is still very much the same, and the hype around the movie, since it was very highly rated, makes it a great choice. Now, admittedly, I was trying to stay true to the premise of not killing anyone. I did stay true to the premise of not firing a bullet, if that helps at all, but I did get a bit bored with just healing my teammates. So uh, when the occasion occurred and somebody got close to me, I would try and kill them with the syringe, which ended up netting me actually quite a few syringe kills in total. There was a point at which I was actually at a positive KDR for a little bit, which was kind of funny. Now, unfortunately, I can't really relate this let out to the film yet because I haven't seen it, um, but I would like to see it. I've heard good things about it, and I'm, I'm pretty curious to know what the story was. I, I know the uh, Japanese island hopping battles during World War II were some of the most intense and crazy ones. Uh, there's just some insane stories about it. And I have seen the Iwo Jima movies from Clint Eastwood, so i definitely like to see this one about Okinawa. And obviously, we are in the incorrect era here, but the mechanics of Battlefield haven't really changed too drastically when it comes to reviving for the most part. It's been around for quite a while in the Battlefield series. Fun fact actually regarding Battlefield 1942, the first Battlefield game and the only one so far to cover the World War II era, is that they didn't actually have reviving as a mechanic in that game. Uh, that didn't come around until a little bit later. Um, and so the original Battlefield game never had reviving. You did have medics and they could heal people, yourself or teammates, but couldn't bring them back from the dead. And yes, I did just kill a sentry with a syringe that's got to be pretty embarrassing for him. Uh, if you think about it, the syringe is actually one of the most powerful melee weapons in the game because it's the only one that can one-shot somebody from the front. Other melee weapons can take two or even three swings to take them down where the syringe, provided that you charge it up all the way, will allow you to one-shot somebody up front, which is kind of funny. The downside, of course, is that uh, when you charge it up, you move really slowly, like if you're aiming down sights, so you can't really chase somebody around. You almost have to lay and wait for them or run up to them and then charge it up, which makes it a little bit awkward. Obviously, this gadget was not designed with its primary intention of killing people, but rather bringing them back to life, but it is kind of funny that it does have that potential. Now, I actually do like the amount of detail in the sense that you're filling up the full syringe with adrenaline to get the kill, whereas when you need to revive, it doesn't fill up the whole syringe. I guess you're not trying to overload the person's body with adrenaline, but if you do, it actually kills them. So uh, that's kind of a cool little bit of detail, though I do think uh, just the speed at which you can revive people in this game is kind of ridiculous. There's no real cooldown for the mechanic whatsoever. So if like five people die right next to me, I can I can get them up in probably five seconds or even faster, which is a lot faster than it was in Battlefield 4. Not really sure why they made the change, if it was a conscious decision or if they just didn't really pay too much attention to it. Maybe it'll get balanced later in the day. Now, uh, initially I wasn't crazy excited about playing just a pacifist style class, just reviving and healing teammates. I mean, Obviously, it's an important part of playing medic, but also being able to defend yourself with a weapon, protect your teammates with a weapon, is an important part of playing a medic as well. But what playing this way did teach me was um, uh, how to be a little bit more in tune with figuring out where my dead teammates were and how to get them the best and fastest attention. You know, you'll notice that I'm using the smaller med packs as that gives me the ability to throw med packs to people. If you aim at somebody and then hit the med pack button, it'll throw a med pack 
to them. You can also, I believe, hit Q while looking at them and it will automatically throw a long range med pack to them, which is kind of a, a cool ability of it. Otherwise, the medical crates will heal over time in a specific area and they can heal multiple people. I just find the packs to be a bit more useful. They allow you to be more mobile as you can heal while you're on the run. Now, there's two main tools you have for locating dead teammates. The first is just your user interface on screen. You'll see a skull and crossbones of dead teammates and you'll see the little timer above it letting you know when uh, they're basically going to be out of time or respawn. What's interesting about that is that when that timer is up, people don't have to respawn. It's just sort of the fast respawn option. So if you see somebody running towards you while you're actually dead, you don't have to respawn after your timer's up. You can still hold your spawn and that medic can get to you and revive you. Smart players will understand this and they'll hold their spawn if they do see a medic closing the distance because if you think about it it's going to take you a lot longer to get back into the combat than it would be if you just waited a few extra seconds after the timer's up to get that revive plus it'll save a ticket depending on what game mode you're playing now the other tool you have available to you aside from the skull and crossbone markers just directly on your screen is the mini map and it's kind of hard to read sometimes depending on how big the mini map is sometimes i'll make the mini map itself a bit bigger so i can see things uh, easier but basically the skull and crossbone that you see on your screen when you're running around looking for dead teammates will not appear if people are too far away from you. It doesn't mean that there aren't dead teammates around and that's what the mini map is useful for is showing you where your teammates are dying, where you might need to go to get a revive or just generally go and hang out waiting for people to die. It'll, it'll give you a good indicator of where the action is happening too. If you see a lot of people dying in one area uh, you'll know that that's where it, the combat is very very heavy. Now in previous Battlefield games you used to be able to hit top of the scoreboard just by playing medic. I believe you could probably still do it if you had an incredible round, but it's not going to be as easy. Part of the reason behind that is that you don't get as many points for revives anymore. If you revive somebody outside of your squad, it's 50 points. If you revive somebody in your squad, it will give you the full 100 points, but in Battlefield 4, you would get 100 points every single time. And the way to get on top of the scoreboard back in BF4 was just to play like uh, Metro or whatever or lockers where people were just so grouped up that five or six people would just die right in front of you and you could get uh, an easy amount of points that way. Um, because this game isn't quite as clustered at the moment, it can be a little bit trickier to get that volume of revives that quickly. Not that reviving and healing isn't a valuable uh, tool and good way to get points and help out your teammates, but it's just not going to re overly reward you uh, anymore for it. So it's like play your role, but we're not going to give you top of the server just for sort of exploiting uh, a, a game mode or something like that. So I like the point distribution better in Battlefield 1 for sure. I think it's overall a better way to play medic and once you've sort of figured out the the best rules for reviving and how to play your class better then starting to work in the combat and the gun aspect to it i think is kind of interesting and certainly doing this loadout has taught me something is like just being a bit more aware of the mini map and where i might need to go to revive teammates because um, before when i played medic i would focus more on the combat and if i saw somebody dead around me or close by then i would go and revive them but i wouldn't necessarily be seeking out uh, dead teammates and it's a it's a very useful tool not only for locating the enemies figuring out where the enemy are but just for going around and getting more saves more ticket saves more teammates back up anyway it's an interesting way to play the game and i'd recommend trying it out at least once just to sort of get a grasp on how to be the best healer you possibly can be and then approaching the hybrid dynamic of being a combatant and a healer at the same time and i think overall it will make you a better player anyway that wraps it up for this episode of loda don't forget to leave your comments down below for next week's episode and i'll see you next time this is level cap signing off